I wanted to ask, like, me personally, I was never really that interested. I know it sounds weird, but some people have a natural interest in Islamic history or like in history in general, perhaps yourself as well. Me personally, I was never, about 10 years ago, or when I was 16, 17, read a book, Lost Islamic History. Yeah, yeah, but other than that, and obviously that was a bit of a revelation for me yeah. because you start learning about these inventions and you also learn about some of the dark side as well, how like certain caliphs were spending most of their resources finding potions that would help them in silly ways and stuff instead of actually focusing on what matters for the ummah. But anyway, aside from that, I didn't really have that deep interest. And then the question that I'm getting to is like, how do you try and teach people, get people to understand the link between Islamic history and like modern problems or like why is Islamic history important? Because the link's not tangible or sometimes you can't really see it unless you research it. How would you tackle that? There's a common perception, especially in the West, that Islamic society has failed and that Muslim society has failed. And the proof of it is simply to point to the Middle East and say, look at the messes going on in the Middle East. So this is proof that Islamic society has failed. And that's a broad generalization. That's assuming, first of all, that the West is not going through its own problems, and it is. That's mm -hmm. one issue. And But secondly, it doesn't really look at how it got to this point. And that there was a point in time when Islamic society was at the top of the world. And it's not just that things are suddenly, that long-term Islamic society just doesn't work. Is much more to it. So the, we can take any major issue in the world that involves Muslims right now, whether it's the issue starting from the East, whether it's the issue of, of Kashmir between India and Pakistan, whether it's the many internal fightings within the Middle East, whether it's the Iran problem with Iran and the United States and all the sanctions against Iran and all those things, whether it's the war in Iraq or the multiple wars in Iraq, the civil war in Syria, the civil war in Yemen, the massive change of governments and the things that happened in Egypt a couple of, about almost 10 years ago now, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you can go on and on, the problems in Mauritania and parts of Mali with the Boko Haram and things like that going on. No matter how you look at this, all of these things have a history to it. People that just didn't wake up one morning and say, I'm going to go out and try and take over the world. I'm going to go out and overthrow the system. There's a whole long history to these things that, that always has a beginning. It may not really doesn't even have a beginning, but there's always something that leads to something, that leads to something, that leads to something else. So we just take the issue of Palestine, Israel, that's a very complex history. It's, um, as Muslims, of course, we say that the Palestinians are right, but there are many mistakes that the Arab leaders at that time and the Palestinians at that time had made and even the non-Arab leaders, the Ottoman Empire before that, that had made that led to this situation. And much of the problems that are happening in the Muslim world are branches or branch off from the injustice that's being placed upon the Palestinians now. And there's, for instance, 9-11, those attacks are partially related to what happens in Palestine. So, uh, and the anger the Muslim world has over the situation in Palestine. It's all connected. It's all, there's always a history behind it. My point is that yeah. is Muslim society has not necessarily failed. There's very few instances of true Muslim society right now anyway. Furthermore, people don't un sometimes understand that money fixes a lot of problems. <laughs> it doesn't fix every problem, but it fixes a lot of problems. Saudi Arabia, for all of its problems, is one of the most peaceful countries in the world, one of the safest countries in the world. There's no civil war happening in Saudi Arabia. Why? Saudi Arabia has a whole lot of money and they're able to keep the populace happy or at least satisfied and able to control much of the problems that other societies going through. If you take Yemen and Syria, those are poor countries. They're a poor country before their civil wars and they're even poorer after the civil wars. The poverty and the problems of poverty were a big deal for those two nations. Iraq was a rich country, but it had a, a leader who was bent on warfare in Saddam Hussein. So that's something different. But generally speaking, people are conflating wealth and the ease that wealth brings. The West is on top because of its wealth. That is, it's not necessarily that democracy or liberalism or any of these things save the, save these societies. It is because of wealth. That is what it, that is what keeps the West on top and why people are generally happy or at least satisfied throughout much of the Western world. 
I assure you, if people took away, if you take away the wealth of the United States, we'll be at war within a year, <laughs> with each other within a year. Mm. It's war can, and war will, war can come, mo, war is usually based on financial reasons, first of all, that's much of the problem. Or internal strife is mostly based on financial reasons. And much of the problems that are happening in the Middle East is not because people are being suffocated by Islam. They're being suffocated by poverty, by injustice, sometimes by tyranny. And there are many other reasons for it, but essentially the West is on top because of money. Muslim countries that have money, such as Malaysia, Vietnam, Saudi Arabia, Brunei, these Muslim countries don't have these issues and they, mm -hmm. they don't have these internal strife. They may not have the quote unquote freedoms that we have, that we consider us having in the West, if you consider those things freedoms, but they're generally happy generally stable countries. Even in many Muslim countries that are not wealthy, they're still generally stable. Morocco is not a particularly wealthy country, but it's generally stable. I'm trying to think, there, there are others in, around, Indonesia is wealthy though, but there are others also mm. though that are not particularly wealthy, but they're still fairly stable. So wealth is a, people conflate the wealth of the West, which is much of, which is based on colonialism, by the way, stealing from the Eastern countries, mm. with stability and safety and security. And that's not really what it is. It's really the fact that it's really, it's not that the system of the West is better. It's simply that for the past five, 600 years, the West has been able to colonize much of the Muslim world, much of the, the Eastern world in general, extract yeah. its resources and go through with that. So that's really what, yeah. that's really what I was just going to add to that. It's like that mindset of the philosophy of secularism or liberalism is superior has somewhat mm -hmm. is sometimes accepted by these formerly colonized nations and people